When and if we should be embarking upon interstellar journeys have been debated for decades. Many are in favor simply because they are pro-space, but their arguments are more a matter of passion than technical feasibility. Interstellar travel and multi-generation spaceships is CG Publishing's latest book, which not only looks into the technical issues, but also the social and human issues, which will impact humankind's excursions to other star systems. It's been compiled by a gentleman by the name of Yoji Kondo, who is one of the most respected science fiction writers in the business. He writes under the name of E. Katami, and he just won the Isaac Asimov Award this year for his science fiction efforts. It talks about the technology that would be required to actually go into deep space, and it also talks about the anthropological aspects of it. What happens to us? How do we do it? What languages do we use? Do we need to genetically engineer ourselves to actually do this? I think if you're prepared to accept that Einstein has still not been proven to be wrong and that hyperspace and the concept of faster than light travel is still impossible, this looks at it from the point of view of how do we do this if we accept that and that we cannot go faster than the speed of light. Some of the writers that have contributed to the book are are high-ranking uh, people in their fields. Yes, uh, sadly, two of the main contributors both just passed away at the end of 2002, and this is their actually actually their last contribution to the uh, the realm of science writing. A gentleman by the name of Robert Forward and another one by the name of Charles Sheffield, both highly respected physicists. And uh, as I say, this is the last thing that they did. One of the chapters written by a famous writer by the name of Freeman Dyson. Uh, talks about how we might look for life out there. How do we actually physically proceed uh, to look and find alien life? What he's proposed is that if there is life in deep space, uh, say for example on the moons of Jupiter, uh, that life may require some kind of light collector to accumulate sunlight to allow it to breed. And so he's saying if we shine a light in the right direction, we might get reflections back just like a deer in the headlights. If we actually are uh, able to survive our own folly and not destroy ourselves as a species, uh, people don't stop to think about this, but this will be our ultimate destiny. We will have to go to the stars to be able to survive as a species, because one day the sun will not be there.